very good. Very, very good. Hello, ma. Hello, ma. Hello, ma. Yes, ma. Very fine, thank you, ma. When are you coming? Um, by one o'clock. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for joining this live stream. Very quickly, um, in the next um, one hour, next 60 minutes, we'll just run through some very few things in an attempt to contribute our quota to Nigeria's development. Is that something that you might be interested in? Then help us share this live stream. Like it and share it so that we can get the information across. Let's gather around. We want to apply some powers. We want to apply some powers. We want to apply some powers. Abi to Sheka. It is not only pastors that have access to that power. You have access to that power. I have access to that power. And I want us to use that power to fix Nigeria. Anyway, you're welcome to this live stream. My name is Benedict Olomu. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening from wherever you are watching us from today. It's the 6th of April, 2024, and I'm excited to be with you today. Um, the next one hour promises to be a very worthwhile use of your time because it's going to be an engagement that would actually make Nigeria to be better. And if you are watching this live stream later on, uh, please do let us know your thoughts and your contributions by just making some comments in the description, uh, in the comment section. And then, of course, you can send us an email. Check the details in the descriptions. You will find something there that will be of benefit to you. Okay. So to start, to start this stream, I want to ask a question. If I say that all the heads of state of Nigeria and the president of Nigeria from 1983 to date, if I say that they are traitors, would that be too much to say? Or how would you react to that? Of course, with the exception of one, and that would be the exception of um, Yaradwa. Can I really say that all the heads of state and presidents of Nigeria from 1983 to date, can I say that they are traitors? And it doesn't matter who they are. See, the, the, the names are very, very few. We can count them on the tip of our fingers. 1983, Muhammadu Buhari took over from, what's his name now? Took over from um, Shehu Shagari and Ineku. And after Muhammadu Buhari, we had Babangida from Babangida. You had NX Shonekong after Babangida stepped aside. From NX Shonekong, we had who now? Abacha. After Abacha passed in 1998, we had Abdul Salam Abubaka. From Abdul Salam Abubaka, yes, in 1999, we had Olusha Gwobasonjo. And then after Olusha Gwobasonjo was Yaradwa. And after Yaradwa was. Um, our own good luck, Jonathan. After good luck, Jonathan was Muhammadu Buhari. And after Buhari, we have the current president, Bola Tinobu. Now, can I say, can I say, can I say, or if I say that all these presidents or heads of state of Nigeria since 1983, if I say that they are traitors, would it be too much for me to say? Will that be something that is false? Or you might want to ask, why am I asking that question? Or why am I raising this point? The whole essence of raising this point is to draw our attention to what is happening in Nigeria steel and mining sector at Jaokuta Steel. That is why I'm asking this question. 
What are the problems that we're facing in Nigeria today? Insecurity, hunger, unemployment, high cost of living, food inflation, poor values, uh, weak Naira, high price of electricity, high price of fuel, high price of gas, all manner of IGR, tax here, tax there. These are things that Nigerians are made to go through on a daily basis basis. Now tell me, all of these problems, for us to solve them, we need to push Nigeria on a path of rapid industrialization. And like the leaders of Japan, the leaders of China, the leaders of India, the leaders of the United Kingdom, the leaders of America will tell you, no country can industrialize without steel, without steel without steel. That means we need Ajaokuta still working. We need Delta still, Alaja, working. But they are not working. Why? Despite the fact that these projects were started in 1980, 1978 by Sheo Shagari. In fact, they were conceived from the days of Abubakar Tafawa Balewa, going and moving on to the days of even Yakubu Gowon. And this project was almost completed as at um, 1983, 97% completed as at 1983, when Muhammadu Buhari took over in a coup. And in that year, since that year, that 2% or 3% have not been concluded by all the presidents that I mentioned earlier. And that is why I ask, with the exception of Shehu Musa Yaradwa, can I say that all of them are traitors? Because it is unthinkable, I can't understand it. Steel was first discovered in the 1700s. Steel. Before then, there was industrialization and it was um, iron they were using. But after steel was discovered, they found that steel was stronger, was lighter, and was less susceptible to corrosion and all that. So, still took over mainstream, and countries started moving on to the phase of industrialization. From 1700, through the 1800s, through the 1900s, and then we are in the early 200s, uh, 2000s, Nigeria cannot manufacture its own steel. Should our leaders not be ashamed of themselves? If the steel sector is working in Nigeria, 10 million jobs, high quality jobs, will be available to Nigerians. 10 million, directly and indirectly. And if you now begin to look at all the other things that will happen afterwards, we are looking about, at about 50 million jobs. Yet, all our presidents and heads of state, with the exception of Yaradua, and I'll come to that in a, in a short time, why I put Yaradua as an exception. With the exception of Yaradua, all of them have failed to give us a working steel sector. Despite the fact that steel is so important to us. We are talking about unemployment, we're talking about insecurity in Nigeria. There is no investment that Nigeria makes as a country that does not involve steel. In fact, all the investments that the Tinubu administration is planning to make in this 2024 budget, 90%, 80% of them are dependent on steel. Your building materials, they are steel-based. If you're talking about 24 hours electricity, your transformers, your transmission lines, they are all what? Elect, they are based on steel. You want to fight insecurity, you need guns, you need um, vehicles, you need weapons. All of those, they are based on steel. You want to engage in mechanized agriculture so that we will have food self-sufficiency. Guess what? You need tractors, you need uh, equipment, hose, um, um, trawlers, and all of those things. Guess what? They are based on steel. Health based on steel. In fact, even our educational sector, 
You know, our degrees in the engineering and sciences are useless today in Nigeria because of a dead still sector. So I can technically tell you that even our educational sector is based on steel. There is no sector of the Nigerian life that will make life better for Nigerians, that will create job, that will solve insecurity, that will, that, will, that will solve unemployment, that will solve hunger. There is no sector that is not dependent on steel. Yet, after 300 years, even 400 years, that other countries have started harnessing the power of steel, Nigeria is yet to harness it. And that's why I ask the question again, if I say that these leaders are traitors, will I be saying too much? Would you ask me to close my mouth? Would you ask me to off my mic? As important as steel is, if you hear the story, the undercurrents, the things that have happened in Ajaukuta steel, you will weep for Nigeria. The corruption and uh, looting and stealing that has gone on there just because people put their selfish interest above the country's interest. It, you will weep for Nigeria. But like I say, there's no point weeping for Nigeria. What we need is to solve Nigeria. We need to fix Nigeria. President after president, head of state after head of state, since 1983, have continued to fail Nigerians. They've continued to fail Nigerians in fixing and activating a Jaukuta steel so that we can have jobs, so that we can solve hunger, so that we can have mechanized agriculture, create employment. Country, yeah, a president after president, they have continued to fail us. And I don't know whether it will be too much to say that these presidents are traitors because there is nobody that will tell me that these people don't know what to do. You want to really tell me that they don't know what to do? They do. But head of state after head of state, they keep looking for ways to get their sons or get their friends or get their cronies to buy a Jaukuta, offer the contract to people they know are not sincere. People they know do not have capacity just so that they can use such companies as front to siphon Nigeria's money into their private pockets. And guess what? The painful thing is this. Those monies are not even stored here in Nigeria. They are not used to develop Nigeria. They are siphoned and then they are hidden in foreign accounts in Switzerland, in the United Kingdom, in America, in Pandora, in Panama, in all those foreign countries. Those monies develop their countries and create unemployment in Nigeria. With all this information, would it be too much to say that our heads of state have questions to answer? Is there something they are not telling us? Rather, they choose to distract us. We are distracted. But here on this platform, if everybody like, let them go and be watching movies. Let them go and be listening to music. We will continue to talk about the problems of Nigeria and we will continue to profile solutions. Because like I will always say, complaining, complaining will not fix Nigeria. It's a starting point to air your grievances, to make your grievances known, but complaining will not fix Nigeria. Like they say, plenty talk, not a full basket. We need to contribute our quota to fix Nigeria. And that is why I'm going to say to you, wherever you are watching me from, whether you're watching after this stream has ended or whether you're watching now, contribute your quota. Share this message along that we need to take our destinies in our hands. We cannot continue to depend on the president. We cannot continue to depend on the leaders because these leaders have shown their propensity to connive and collude to siphon Nigeria's commonwealth into their own private pockets and hide these loots outside of Nigeria. And so if we are going to have a country that works for all of us, we all have to put hands on deck. And that is where you come in. That is where I come in. If you look into the description of this video, of this stream, you will see the link to join the League of Patriots. Click it. Join it. 
That is the whole essence of this live stream. To get as many of you as possible to join forces together with us. We all need to organize. We cannot afford to continue to leave this country in the hands of these locusts. That all they know is consumption, consumption, consumption. Consumption, consumption, consumption. Is that not what Tinubu is doing right now? Everything that Tinubu is doing is about milking the Nigerian people. Electricity tariff hike. What is it about? Milking the people. Milking. Devaluing the Naira. What is it about? Milking the people. Yes. Increase in price of petrol. What is it about? Milking the people. If you go out now in the market, there are all manner of taxes. They have set up their people. They have brought thugs on the road to collect money from car owners if you are carrying loads in your car. All manner of things. Milking the people. And you know the painful thing? What do they give in return? Nothing. They milk this money from people. Milk them continuously through all manner of things. You are increasing electricity. You are increasing Price of petrol, you are increasing price of diesel, you are increasing price of gas, price of kerosene, everything is on the increase, cost of living on the increase, inflation, inflation on the increase, and what have you done to create new wealth? Zero. All these monies that are siphoned from the people, that are milked from the people, what do they do with it? They hide under all manner of schemes, all manner of schemes to loot those money into their private pockets and painfully hide those money out outside of Nigeria, playing into the hands of the, 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 the elite group of people that are so interested in Nigeria remaining backward. We cannot continue to leave the fate of Nigeria in the hands of these politicians and these wicked leaders. We cannot. They call it IGR. What kind of evil IGR is that? An IGR that is focused on using all means to collect from the citizens, collect from the citizens without giving back. The primary responsibility of government is what? Security and welfare. Are the people getting the security? Are they getting the welfare? Look at what is happening in the north. Look at what is happening in the south. Insecurity everywhere, kidnappings everywhere. Yet, they continue to milk the people. They continue to milk the people. They continue to milk the people. Ha. We cannot continue to allow this. We have to take our destiny in our hands. And that is why this live stream is very, very important. It is very, very important. If you're watching, please share this stream. Let people know about it and take the message, not only online, take it offline. Let them know that there is a link they have to click. There is a group they have to join for us to fix Nigeria. The problem of Nigeria is leadership. We all know. The problem of Nigeria is leadership. One of the problems, or at least the symptoms. So for us to fix this symptom, we have to go to the root. And where is it that bad leaderships come from? Where are bad leaders recruited? You think it's at election? No, 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 no. Election is the point where they present them to us. They start at the political parties. So if we're going to solve the problem of bad leadership in Nigeria, we have to go to the political parties. And if you go to the political parties, just take a look at all of the 18 political parties, or is it 19 now? Because I hear maybe an additional one has been approved too. If you look at all 18 of them, you'll find out that none of them have clear-cut ideologies. Not even Labour Party that people like us sweated. To support in 2023 no clear-cut ideologies and the way these political parties are set up they are set up to block out and shield off well-meaning nigerians they set up these political parties they arrange these political parties in a way that it is the corrupt politicians that are thrown up for elective offices so if the political parties are the recruitment houses for bad leadership Shouldn't we face and focus our attention on the political parties? Shouldn't we take our power, our Beto Shaker power, and focus it on the political parties? I think we should focus it on the political parties. And that is where you and I come in. That is the whole reason for this live stream today. Join us. Let us create a fresh political party. 
Because if all these 18 political parties will not create an enabling environment for every Nigerian to participate in the governance process, then we must create a fresh political party, a new political party from scratch. And it doesn't matter who you are, whether you are APC, PDP, whether you are Labour Party, whether whatever. The elections have come and gone. We are preparing for the future of Nigeria. Ask yourself this question. The way the country is now, do you like it? Can you seriously say that our leaders are doing well? Can you seriously say that? Our, and, and when I say leaders, I'm not talking about president alone. I'm talking about the governors, the local government chairmen. I'm talking about the state house of assembly members. I'm talking about the house of Repre the representative members, the senate members, the judiciary, our leaders, the politicians, the bulk of them as we have them now. Are they doing well? If the answer is no, what are you doing about it? And don't come and tell me that there is nothing that you can do. Because that is what they want us to believe. Don't say that, oh, our votes do not count. We tried and tried in 2023. Did our vote count? Yes, our vote counted. It may not have counted to the extent we wanted it, but definitely our vote did count. And there were some returns on our investment. So if we give up now, we will lose what we gained in 2023. And that is why it's important that we build on what we have gained before now. Let's build on it. Let's not give up. Let's not give in to the weapons of distractions of these people. Their weaponization of hunger and weaponization of poverty. Let's not give in to them. So we require you to join us. Please join us. Join us. Let's create a new political party with clear conditions. Clear conditions, conditions that will open the political space for well-meaning Nigerians. Right now, there are so many well-meaning Nigerians with good intention, but they cannot access the arena of public office because the political parties are set up in such a way to scare them out, to scare them off. They block them off. Even a party like Labour Party in the upcoming Edo governorship election set the nomination form to be 30 million naira. How many Nigerians can afford that? And by the time you think that, oh, you're going to need hundreds of millions of naira, if not billions, to run successful campaign, how many Nigerians can afford that? This is what scares people away. Genuine, well-meaning Nigerians. This is what scares them away. So if we're going to solve the problem of Nigeria, stop thinking about revolution. Stop thinking about bloody revolution. If there's going to be a revolution, it has to be a mental revolution. And it has to be a revolution of organization, of coming together. And that has to be through this creation of a new political party. We have to create a new political party. We have to create a new political party. A political party where nomination fee for the highest position in the land the office of president should not be more than 50,000 naira. Yes. Oh, you say many people will not have access, it will not be an all commas affair. Should it not be an all commas affair? Should some people be disenfranchised from running for president in Nigeria? Is it not supposed to be on equal footing? Is it not supposed to be a level playing field? So, how can it be a level playing field when you put the nomination form? at 100 million. It cannot be a level playing field. So for us to have a level playing field, we cannot, if we cannot get these other political parties, if we cannot get them to set up this standard such that we, you make the nomination fee to be very, very affordable, not more than 100,000 Naira. In fact, we should push for a law to be made that no political party in Nigeria should have nomination form more than 100,000 naira so that every Nigerian can have access to contribute their ideas. There are so many people with ideas, so many people with ideas in Nigeria, but they are shielded off. The system is blocking them off. It doesn't want to allow them to political office so that they will make Nigeria better. So in order for us to fight that system, we have to apply our brains. 
We have to apply our sense. And it has to start by the creation of a new political party. And to do that, this new political party that we want to create will be such that the nomination fee will not be higher than 50,000 Naira. So that if mechanic wants to run for president, let him come. If panel beater wants to run for president, let him come. If bike rider wants to run for governor, let him come. Are these not the people that are building and developing the economy? We need this enabling environment so that Nigeria can work. We need to retire these locust leaders. I call them locust leaders. You know locusts? If you locust enter your farm, I am sorry for you. All your agricultural produce, they are gone. They are consumers. Is that not what our leaders are? Consumers? Locusts? That in 400 years, since other countries are using steel, Nigeria cannot manufacture its own steel. 400 years. You see how backwards they have made us? You see how backwards they have made us from, from 1983 to date all our presidents and head of state with the exception of Yaradwa. I guess that's why they killed him. Yes. They killed Yaradwa. Many people think that he was sick, he had cancer and all that. It was accelerated. If you follow the story of how his death came, he was always going to Germany. He didn't know what he would go and come back. His condition would become worse. And before he knew it, when he realized that it's like these people are the ones doing me, oh, he now went to Saudi Arabia. But then it was too late. He passed on. Because all the policies of Yaradwa, he was the one that was going to activate our Jaukuta, took it back from the global infrastructure people and took it back so that he can activate it, was going to go back to the original Russians that built it. He was the one that reversed the sale of Nigerian refineries, was going to activate our refineries. In fact, think about it, is it not a shame? That since 1978 till date, we have not built one extra refineries. All of the four refineries that Nigeria has, they were built between, before 1978. Before 1983. And since 1983, not a single one more refineries. And you say, I should not say that these heads of states are traitors, with the exception of Yaradwa. Buhari is still alive. He has questions to answer. He needs to come and tell us why. He stopped the completion of Ajakuta still. Babangida is still alive. He needs to come and tell Nigerians why. He stopped the completion of Ajakuta still. Okay, El Nesho has passed. Abacha has passed. Abdul Salami should come and tell Nigerians why he did not complete Ajakuta still. Obasanjo must tell Nigerians why he did not complete Ajakuta still. Good luck, Jonathan, must tell Nigerians. Buhari must tell Nigerians. All of these leaders, they must tell Nigerians. Why they did not complete Ajaukuta still, as important as it is? Is it not a thing of shame? The First World War happened when? 1914. By that First World War, Europe has already been manufacturing aeroplane. They are manufacturing guns. They are manufacturing weapons. 1914. 1914 to 2024 is how many years? 110 years, 110 years after Nigeria cannot manufacture anything and our leaders cannot hide their face in shame, they will now use their ill-gotten wealth to buy cars and be flashing it amongst us and we'll be clapping for them. We must stop this nonsense. Oh. We must stop this nonsense. In fact, when we see such leaders, when they buy their big land cruisers and buy their big jeep, when we see them pass by, we should be shouting woo to them. We should boo them. Because if they are not traitors, I don't know who they are. They should come and explain to Nigerians why for 100 years, no progress in Nigeria's steel sector. Many people say there's external uh, manipulations. I agree. I blame the external forces. The US of this world, the UK of this world, the Euro Europe of this world, even the Chinese and the, the Indians. I blame them for interfering to make sure that we don't have an active steel sector. Yes, I blame them. But I blame our leaders who cannot come out and say the truth to Nigerians so that we can use our collective effort to fix Nigeria. The time has come for us to take our destiny in our hands. All these leaders that will not do what's best for the interest of Nigeria, 
we must retire all of them. And it starts from the political parties. And that is why I am saying it again. Don't just watch and pass. Check the link in the description. You'll see League of Patriots. Click to join it. That group is the group that we form the core that we now push for the creation of this fresh political party that is based on ideology. And the first ideology I've just told you is that nomination form for any position at all will not be higher than 50,000 Naira so that everybody will have access. So that everybody will have access. And not come and tell me that uh, it will be too much to handle. No, it will not be too much to handle. See, I've said it and I will continue to say it. Elections, whether primaries or major elections, are difficult to run because people are trying to manipulate it. If the people have leeway to manipulate it, then they will manipulate it. But if the constitution spells it out clearly, if the constitution of the Electoral Act 2022 spelled it out clearly that there must be direct transfer of results from polling units using beavers, there will be no leeway for INEC to hide behind. So these are the things that we need to do. People say that there is so much laws in Nigeria already. Yes, but those laws are not efficient. And there are some laws that we need that must be enacted now. I mentioned them in another video. That those laws must be enacted. Things like the free food and social welfare law. It must be enacted immediately. But before that, we need to fix the problem of leadership. And to do it, we need to go back to the source. And that's the political parties. And the political parties, the basic ideologies that they need, that they require to open the field for well-meaning Nigerians to participate, those conditions are missing. So it's your responsibility, it's my responsibility to create a fresh political party that will give Nigerians that opportunity. Nomination fee, not more than 50,000 Naira for the highest position. It can even be less as you cascade down to governor and local government. So that's the first ideology. The second ideology is that our primaries will be direct primaries where every member of the political party is free to vote and to be voted for on one condition that that member must have been a member of this, our new political party for at least one year. When we have this kind of clear-cut conditions, we will not have a situation whereby these gruntled elements, these gruntled politicians, will leave their political parties to come to our newly formed political party after they lose their primaries or lose their elections there. They, if they join, then they must wait for a period of at least one year. They must have gone through the orientation phase of our new political party. They must have accepted the core ideologies of our political parties. And they must have agreed that the disciplinary actions of our new political parties will be meted on them. They will sign to it. They will sign it written down, black and white, so that when they fail, when we implement those disciplinary measures, we can take them to court. And then when they have stayed in one at least one year, they can now run for public office. That way we will open the field to everybody. When we open the field to everybody, we will have free and fair elections. Because if we have to run primaries, the way they ran it in APC, if you go back, you will see the video where the vice president, or Yemi Oshimbajo, was talking about 2,700 and something delegates. We are the ones that chose the candidate for president on the APC platform for the whole of Nigeria. You can imagine that. A country of 220 million people, only 2,700 delegates chose a candidate. And of course, these politicians have stolen enough money to pay these delegates. We all heard how much they were paid. We all heard how much they were paid. Imagine that it was the whole APC members that were delegates. Would it be possible for them to be bought? It will not be. That is why we need a political party where the mode of primaries is direct primaries. Every member of the political party will vote 
That is how they do it in America. You saw what is you see what is going on between Trump and Biden now. They are going around the country doing primaries, direct primaries. Everybody who is a member of the political party votes. In fact, every person who is not even a member of the political party but is a citizen of America votes. That is how to build a country that works. We need that kind of system in Nigeria. We need it all. If we are going to correct the leadership problem in Nigeria, we have to open up the political space to well-meaning Nigeria. Meaning, we have to make it less difficult and less discouraging for people with good intentions to join public office. And to do that, the political party from whence they come, that political party must employ direct primaries. So that's another ideology that we are imbibing in this our political party. Another ideology that is critical is the fact that there are five laws that this our new political party is built upon. The free food and social welfare law, the anti-corruption amnesty law that bans government workers, not only public officials or elected officials now, Bans government workers from storing money abroad, from buying properties abroad, and repatriating all the monies that they have over there, repatriating them back to develop Nigeria. That's the anti-corruption amnesty law. The third one is the medical tourism prohibition law. The fourth one is the education tourism prohibition law. The fifth one is the small business support law. We need these five laws to rapidly push Nigeria on the path of industrialization. And this will be the core of our new political party. Don't you think you should join? Don't you think you should contribute your quota to this noble cause? I want to appeal to you, please, check the link in the description and join us. Join us to carry, it's not going to cost you anything. It's only to click the link. And once you join, Invite others to come. Let us make use of our numbers. When we come together in our numbers, we will be able to fight off these lions that are trying to attack us. As it is now, the few politicians, these wicked politicians are the lions, and they see us as the buffaloes. And so we have a head of 1,000 buffaloes being chased about by a pride of 10 lions. And initially, the buffaloes are running away because they fail to understand their individual power and their collective power. But if you have seen that video before, the video of the buffalo versus the lion, when they realize the power in their strength, guess what happens? They put the lions to flight. They chase them, even kill them. We need to realize that we have power in our numbers. And that's why I am appealing to you today, please. Join the League of Patriots. Let us create the new political party that is based on these ideologies that I'm talking about. Today we are complaining about electricity price or electricity tariff hike. We will keep complaining. Oh. Have you noticed that we keep complaining from one problem to another? They padded budget here. We complained, complained, complained. Did anything happen? No. They removed fuel subsidy fraudulently. Because what they were supposed to do was remove the fraud in the first subsidy. But what they did was they kept the fraud and increased the price of petrol products. They increased it. We screamed and screamed and screamed. What happened? Nothing. Prices of goods started going up. Inflation started going up. We complained, complained, complained. What happened? Nothing. Dollar is devalued. In the name of unification of FX window, FX window refused to unify. What we saw is devaluation. Okay, fine. It's devalued now. We complain though. What has happened? Nothing. If we think we can just sit back and complain and complain and complain and complain alone, we will be wasting time. We will be wasting time. And the more time we waste, the more it will now look as if we cannot defeat these wicked politicians. The more it will now look as if there is no hope for these wicked politicians. There is hope. All we need to do is come together. To create a fresh political party that will be devoid of this rubbish. We need to work together. Let me tell you this. They weaponize poverty against us. All the time. They weaponize poverty. And they now use it. The poverty that we have weaponized. 
they will mix it with religion, mix it with um, ethnicity, tribal sentiment, and use it to divide us only when election comes. Only when election comes. And we must rise above this. We must understand that we cannot be allowing, continue to allow ourselves to be divided along ethnic lines, along tribal lines. We cannot. We must open our eyes because there are no, <laughs> we cannot continue to measure the gains of a particular tribe or the particular religion by the number of persons that hold public office. I don't know if you get that. We cannot continue to hold or base our understanding of the benefits that a particular tribe gets from public from, from government. We cannot base it on the number of political office positions that the people from that tribe holds. Let me try to explain. We cannot say that for us to say the Igbos or the Yorubas or the Hausas or the Robos. How much they benefit from the government of Nigeria today is now going to be measured by how many Urobos or how many Igbos or how many Yorubas or how many um, Hausas or Fulanis are in positions of power. We can't, we can't do that. If we do that, we fail. If we do that, we continue to allow them to divide us with religion and ethnicity. Because think about it. Yes, right now Yoruba is in power. President Tinubu has appointed quite a good number of Yoruba persons. Answer me this question. How many Yorubas are enjoying, based on the fact that they have plenty Yoruba people in position of power? Maybe 1%. But I can even assure you that that number is less than 1%. 99% of Yorubas are still suffering and suffering massively, including those people who voted, voted along tribal lines. They are suffering despite having their own Yoruba person in power. The same thing happened during Buhari's time. 99% of the Fulanis were suffering. Out of the 10 poorest states in Nigeria, 8 of them are from the north. Fulanis. So we cannot continue to measure how an ethnic group or a religious group benefits from a government based on the number of persons from that tribe or from that religious group that are in position of power. We need to change that. Those things are used to divide us. Because if you look at it, I cannot really say that Tinubu is a Muslim president or a Yoruba president. It doesn't matter because the Muslims are suffering right now and the Yorubas are suffering. I cannot really say that um, Akbabu is a Christian Senate president because they were pushing these things when it's election time so that they can gain advantage. And after they are finished now, tell me, are all the Christians enjoying now because Akbabio, a Christian, a Senate president? The answer is no. And if you even want, I can take it further and tell you that neither Akbabio nor Tinubu are Christian or Muslim leaders. These people are elites. They only use these sentiments to divide us, to get themselves into power. And the annoying thing is that when they get into power, the things that are supposed to create jobs, they don't focus on them. All of them since 1983 refused to activate Ajao Kuta Steel, something that can give Nigerians 50 million jobs in less than 10 years. We need to change these leaders. And that is why I'm calling on you again. Please, please, I beg you in the name of God. This is not the time to think about Jackpa. This is not the time to think about secession. It is not. This is the time to unite as the people of Nigeria to kick out these bad leaders that we have been plagued with since 1983. Except, of course, Yaradua. You have a task to do. We cannot just continue to keep complaining. And I have a task to do. So click the link in the description and please join. And don't forget, we want to engage your support to force the National Assembly to pass this free food and social welfare law. We need it. If we don't pass this law, elections can never be free and fair in Nigeria. If we do not pass the free food and social welfare law, 
in Nigeria today. Elections can never be free and fair. It doesn't matter how long they tweak the constitution. It doesn't matter how whether they even create a new constitution. It doesn't matter whether or not they give us a perfect electoral act. If we do not sign the free food and social welfare bill into law, if we don't, elections can never be free. And if elections are not free, Nigeria cannot develop. We cannot push these low-cost leaders away. So we need your support. Click, check the description for the link to create this free food and social welfare law. Join us, contribute to it. There is a sample of it in the description. The link is there. If it's not there now, we'll put it, up, put it after this live stream. Join us in this task. Don't just sit idly by. I know that one of the tools that they are using against us is that they are distracting the followers with entertainment, with movies, with music, with uh, football. They are distracting them so that they will not unite to do the things they need to do to push the wicked leaders out. We say that there's a leadership problem, but there's also a followership problem. In fact, we have both of them, leadership problem and followership problem. So what the external powers do is that they corrupt the leadership. Yes, they corrupt the leaders and use that corruption to compel them through all manners of means. Threats of assassination, threats of coup, threats of uh, uh, removal from office. They use all of those threats to compel the leaders to do their bidding. And then they now face the followers and they use the weapons of division and weapons of distraction. Weapons of division, two top weapons of division in Nigeria, ethnicity and religion. Then weapons of distraction, five top weapons of distraction in Nigeria. Movies, music, comedy, what else? Entertainment, football. Those are the top five weapons of distraction. They are using this weapons against the followership so that the followership will be distracted they will be following all these things watching football you, you, you know how people follow after football the influence football has in Nigeria is bigger than the influence of religion the same thing with music the same thing with movies if you go on YouTube now if this was a movie that is playing we would have had more than 1 million views by now that's to tell you how this weapon of distraction is working. People are more interested in movies, in music, in comedy, in entertainment, in uh, football. They are more interested in it. So they are distracted. I know this can be very, very distracting, but I want to appeal to you that are watching. Please, take time out and focus on this. Join us. Click the link in the description. Join us. Let us push this bill on the National Assembly. Let us force them. Don't just throw your hands in the air and give up and say it cannot be done. It can be done. I know it can be done. If not, all this complaining will continue. Labor has threatened federal government now. They have threatened to Nubu that they will go on strike if federal government does not reverse the electricity tariff hike. And Tinubu don't see labor finish. Tinubu has no respect for labor again. In fact, you remember what happened when he was telling them that they should go and see that they are not the people who have a voice. So what is going to be the end result? The tariff stays. In fact, we are being told that even despite this tariff, there is still subsidy in the electricity sector. What kind of country are we in? And labor is threatening short, a showdown. All of those will not yield results. We need to do... Number one, create a fresh political party that will throw up genuine and sincere people for public office. We need to do that very quickly. And then number two, we need to pass this free food stamp and social welfare law. We need to pass it so that we can block all this corrupt, corruption-leading uh, conditional cash transfer, corruption-leading constituency project in the executive and in the legislature. We can block it and get money that we'll use to Poor in agriculture. Imagine if we push 50 million youths into agriculture with homegrown solutions that would not depend on dollar. Homegrown solution. Imagine if we did that. Nigeria will rapidly industrialize 
in less than six months. They don't want us to do this. So they make us think that it is impossible to do. It's not impossible to do. All you need to do is click the link in the description, join us. Whether you want to join the League of Patriots for us to start a fresh political party, we are thinking about the name. So if you have suggestions, please pass your suggestions across to us. We are still doing it. We'll do it from now till 14th of, of April. From 15th of April, we will unveil the name and we'll start the process of registering this political party. Because we have to save this country. So click and join. We need representatives from across the length and breadth of Nigeria. If you're interested and you know that you don't have 50 million, 100 million, 10 million, 5 million to participate in election, this link is for you. Don't just sit down and continue to give power to these corrupt leaders. If you do not click the link and join, then I hold you responsible. You are the one empowering these corrupt leaders over us. Just click the link in the description and join us. Let us create this fresh political party that will put pressure on the National Assembly to pass the free food and social welfare law and other laws so that we can open the political space for well many Nigerians to take part or to participate in. Is that too much to ask? That's not too much to ask. What may be too much to ask is this. Your contributions should be paid into the account in the description, the Royal Purple Bee Foundation. The account is in the description. We need your contribution, your donation. I called it tight and offering and somebody was offended. Well, I use tight and offering so that people can understand. Because you see, these are the kind of projects and courses that we need to contribute our monies to so that we can have a country that works for all. So that we can have a country that works for all. I mentioned the weapons now. The weapons of division, which are religion and ethnicity. And then I mentioned the weapons of distraction, which are music, football, movies, comedy, entertainment, sports. These are weapons of distractions. They are used to distract Nigerians from focusing on what their leaders are doing. They are used to distract Nigerians so that when they become so distracted, they give up and they forget. You, you know what they say when they say, go and drink so that you forget your soul. You, you, you become so distracted, you can't even remember what the, your leaders are doing anymore. So they continue to get away with it. So if I ask you now, who is the chairman of your local government, you don't know because you are distracted with these things. You are more focused on them. We need to change these things. We need to change the narrative in Nigeria today. And Nigeria is looking up to you. The third thing you need to do is to look in the description and contribute your quota. Pay your tithe and your offering. Whether you are in a mosque or whether you are in a church or whether you are in a shrine, wherever you are, pay your tithe and your offering. Contribute your quota. Donate to the, uh, uh, to the account in the description below. For now, because subsequently, what we will now do is, when we have succeeded in pushing the National Assembly to pass the free food and social welfare law, what we then do, because in that law, there will be the creation of a Nigeria Welfare Fund. And that Nigeria Welfare Fund will now be where we will contribute the monies to. That will not be the only source of funding the free food for the poorest of the poor Nigerians. Other sources are outlined in the documents. You can just check the document and appraise yourself of it and then also contribute your own quota to it. But for now, send your contributions to the Royal Purple Bee Foundation. This country, I believe very strongly that we can fix it. The only challenge we have is how far are you willing to go? How far are you willing to go? We may not be many today, we will be many tomorrow. If you invite one person, Today, and that person invites one person. You know what they say, let the, the rat in the house tell the one in the bush. Let person tell person. When we do that, before long, you will see that they will get the critical mass that we need to drive these policies. Many people believe that the ideas are good. Where they have a challenge is that they think it is not doable. And I'm telling you, it is very, very doable. In fact, it is very, very easy. All we need to do is to change our mindset. And the starting point, the steps are easy now. Just click the link and join any of the group. And of course, don't forget to se uh, send your donation. If you have any questions, any contributions, please send them to us. You can put them, you can do so in the uh, comment section or you can send us an email. Our emails are displayed. 
But don't tell us it cannot be done. We will not entertain any naysayers. Help us look at the problems of Nigeria and see how we can solve them. All these solutions that we are proffering, that we are putting forth, tell us how you can make the solutions better. Don't tell us how they cannot be done because they can be done. We can save Nigeria from these wicked leaders that have, they call them, they have captured the state. It's called state capture. So, Tinubu has put his friends in the legislature. He employed his friend in the executive. And also some have put his friend in the judiciary. So, even things that should not be heard of, where you have separation of powers at full play, you now have the head of judiciary coming to bow to the president. You have the head of the legislature coming to bow to the president, which means invariably, we don't have three arms of government. We have one. And that invariably also means that they have captured the state, Tinubu and his friends. And if you look at the effect of the policies, the kind of policies they, they are engaging in, you'll see that they are doing so for their own selfish reasons and selfish interests. Because I don't see why any serious government that means well for Nigeria, and I say this with all sincerity, any serious government that means well with, for Nigeria, the first thing they will be tackling is how to take Nigeria out of consumption into production. And that means the starting point will be Ajaukuta steel, Delta steel, activating our steel sector, making sure that we are able to produce steel, and from there, we are able to send those steel to, as feedstock to the steel rolling mills to manufacture flat sheets, and we don't have to import. And we can even sell the excess to gain. And don't come and tell me that, oh, we don't have enough. Steel. Japan does not have any, any mines for iron. Japan does not. They don't. All the iron ore that they use, all the coal that they need to produce the steel, Japan, that makes Toyota, that makes Honda, that makes Mitsubishi, Japan, Japan that was flattened in 1945, that Japan, they don't have any iron ore. They import everything and they have a working steel sector. No talk of Nigeria that has steel that has iron ore, that has coal, even if you say it's not enough, can we not import like Japan? Don't you know that even China is coming to buy our small coal from Enugu? They are stealing it. Stealing our iron ore. It's time for us to wake up, oh. It's time for us to wake up and we need to, we need to, we need to take action. We need to take action. And that action means that you and I need to get involved. All the screaming, 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 screaming. Ah, we go scream, we go scream. Tired. You know what they say that uh, you go explain. You know, there are so many analysts now. We're analyzing the problem. And that's, in fact, one weapon that I didn't mention that is used for distracting the people is news. If you know anybody that follows the news, go and check the people. They never have any positive outlook on Nigeria. Because news is a weapon of distraction. News is a weapon of distraction. What is it that they give? The news is supposed to be the fourth realm of the estate or the fourth estate or whatever. They are supposed to report things that will make life better for the average Nigerians, right? So if they are supposed to report news that will make life better, I want you to ask yourself this question genuinely. If you go through the headline news in the mainstream media, go through the headline news in channels, Arise, TVC, uh, AIT, go through the headline news. How does those news empower the majority of middle class and lower class Nigerians, how does those news make their life better? In fact, if you ask me, when they watch those news, one thing happens to them. They give up. They throw their hands in despair. You see how the electricity tariff hike has happened now to show you how Tinubu has the media under his wrap. What are we hearing? Explanation upon explanation. Upon. In fact, you see the NERC person coming to explain that the reason why electricity tariff has to be increased is because 
Some people are wasting it. No serious excuse. When they want to do their corruption, they will make something that is supposed to be so simple, they will make it complex. Look at what happens in the NMPC. Nobody can tell you. Everybody keeps coming out to shout here that, oh, eh, Nigeria could not sustain subsidy. Nigeria could not. Cause if you ask them what is subsidy, they don't know. Even the governor of CBN did not understand where, what was happening in NMPC. A whole governor of CBN. Not to talk of the so-called economic uh, specialist, experts, that come and jump on screens on national TV. They don't know. They cannot explain to you what the subsidy is. So they will tell you what Kayari has told them. That's all they are. Repeating what Kayari has told them. So when they want to do their corruption, they will make something that is supposed to be so simple. They will make it look complex. There is no fuel subsidy. There was no fuel subsidy. No fuel subsidy was removed. They only replaced one corruption with another corruption. And then they increased the pump price so that Nigerians can be milked more without giving anything back in return. That's all. And in the end, it will benefit their foreign people who are backing our local so-called businessmen like Aliko Dangote. So those ones can maximize their... If you hear them talking now, when they talk about foreign direct investment, they are always talking, oh, we are increasing the tariff on electricity, we are increasing the, this thing on uh, the price of petrol so that our investors can maximize their profit. They are, they are always... They are not even hiding it. That's to tell you that these leaders are really not interested in the overall welfare of Nigerians. They are interested in only themselves. So we, the people of Nigeria, must now take our destinies in our hands. They will scream and continue to, if we think that it's by complaining. No, we have to apply sense. So we have to apply sense. And we have to apply some strategy. And that starts with you clicking on the links to join us. April 14 is the date, is the closing date. So you, you must do it now. You must do it now. Thank you very much for your time. This is the much you can do today. Like I said, if you have contributions, put them. If you have questions, send them. But don't tell us it cannot be done. I'll see you again tomorrow. We'll keep doing this. Little um, drops of water here and there. We'll make a mighty ocean. I am very, very confident of it.